Welcome to this QuickBooks 2020 tutorial for beginners on how to make a deposit from undeposited funds. Okay, so undeposited funds is an account in QuickBooks that confuses a number of people. Now, basically what undeposited funds is, is a holding account for when you receive payments from customers or clients and you have not yet taken them to the bank, physically taken to the bank or remote deposit or deposit by your phone, whatever, uh, it holds it there until you actually deposit that money. Now, it's I would say it's kind of a safety feature, and the reason is is because let's say that you make deposits once a week or twice a week, and you receive a bunch of payments on Monday, but you don't deposit them till Wednesday. Well, you know, if you show them in your checking account on Monday in QuickBooks and you go and pay bills or spend that money, you know, you're, you could possibly bounce a check or, or overdraw your account because that money's not in your physical, your actual checking account. So it's, it's, it's a good feature. Some people use it, some people don't. So, so let's walk through here. I want to show you first, if you go up to edit and you go down to preferences, all right, and you go to payments, all right, and then click on company preferences, you're going to see this. If this uh, checkbox is not checked, okay, it will default to your checking account, all right? If it is, then it's going to say use undeposited funds as a default deposit to account, all right? So let me show you what that means, all right? And again, this is just personal preference. If you want to show it to undeposited funds, that's great, and then you can move it to your bank account, and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video, all right? Okay, so let's say that uh, we receive a payment. So I'm going to go up to customers and I'm going to go down to receive or uh, receive payments here. And we're going to say, I'm going to pick one. I haven't really looked uh, who owes what. Okay, so let's say XYZ company remodel and they pay us $1,005.39. All right, so we're going to say $1,005.39. All right, and we're going to say this is check number 25487. All right, and so you'll see it automatically applies to these two invoices because that's what they paid. All right, and we're going to say save and close. Okay, so now what that does is it holds it in this undeposited funds account. All right, so when it's holding it in this account, what you're going to do when you physically take it to the bank is you're going to have to go to banking and make deposits. Okay. So you'll see here, these are all the payments that are showing as to take to the bank. All right. So these are all payments that have been received that are sitting there and being held. Now you can see our payment down here for $1,005.39. All right, so it is not showing in the checking account at this point. All right, so let me show you. Uh, if I go and I pull up a, let's, let's go to the balance sheet. I wanna show you what this does. Okay, so on the balance sheet with our assets, here's our checking account. And then if you look down here, you're gonna see this undeposited funds account. So if I double click on this, scroll all the way to the bottom, you're going to see the $1,005.39. All right. So it's just sitting there waiting for us to take this to the bank. All right. And it's not going to be in the checking account in QuickBooks. All right. So let's go back to make deposits. And let me close this out and go back and say banking make deposits. It'll pull up this screen again. And we're going to say we're going to take this to the bank. Now, here is a tip that a lot of people I think falter on a little bit. What you want to do is you want to make your deposits. So your physical deposits you take to the bank. Uh, if you fill out a deposit slip, if you do it, you know, remotely, whatever the case may be, you want to make the deposit separate for each deposit that you move in QuickBooks. So for example, let's say that uh, on a Tuesday, uh, let's say we have, you know, all of these right here that are going to the bank and we're going to make this deposit. If this is one deposit you were making at the bank, you want to make your deposit slip or your remote deposit for a total of this amount. Okay. If you are only taking these three to the bank, you want to make your deposit slip for this amount. Okay. 
and etc. So if we're just taking this deposit to the bank, a thousand five and thirty nine cents, you want to make the deposit for that exact amount. Now here is why: um, when you go to reconcile your bank statement at the end of the month, you're going to see these as deposits to the bank, and you want your QuickBooks entry as a deposit to match this exact amount because it'll be much easier to reconcile. Now the situation people run into is they say, okay, I took, uh, let's say uh, one big deposit to the bank and it was for all four of these. So I deposit 11,125, but I'm checking these off one at a time. So in QuickBooks, you're gonna show a deposit of 1,005, but at the bank, on the bank statement, you're gonna show a deposit of 11,000. It's gonna be very hard to match up. So you wanna make sure that you do these individually and match them to how you deposit them at the bank. Okay, so I click OK here and it's gonna show up here and it's gonna say this is from undeposited funds and it's moving it over to the checking account. This is the day that we actually took it to the bank. We're gonna hit save and close and I'm gonna show you now, you'll see that it reduces undeposited funds. And this is because it moved it from here over to the checking account. So let me show you the checking. And I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom here. And you'll see here it is in the checking account. Okay. So those are the basic mechanics of you receive a payment and it goes to undeposited funds. And then when you take it to the bank, you have to go to make deposits. And that moves it from undeposited funds over to the checking account. All right. Any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment below, uh, leave a question. Uh, also, head over to the QuickBooks University at qbuniversity.org. Lots to discover there uh, with the training tutorials and where I answer your personal questions. Thanks so much.